if x is greater than this or x is less than that, x is greater than or y is greater than the height or y is less than zero, then I'm out of the world. Um, and if I'm out of the world, then I just remove myself from the world, and otherwise I move. Okay, let's compile this. It does compile, and try that out again. Take a bit of debris, put it in here, let it run. Whoa, okay, so we got movement. I can put these in here now, and they fall down. Okay, now I've got debris that can fly around. And if I've, I've stopped that now, if I put a few bits of debris in here together, and I start run, they all fall down. Of course, they all fall now um, at the same speed. Gravity um, acts on all of them. The only thing that I have to do now is that when I create bits of debris, they start off with a bit of a force already flying outside um, flying flying apart from each other. So if I go back in here and in my constructor I um, give them a random speed in a random direction. Let's say um, I take a random number and there is of course the Greenfoot get random number method um, which where I can specify a range. The direction, if I want the direction random uh, it's specified in 360 degrees, so it's 0 to 359. If I give 360 as my boundary here, I get a random direction. I do the same for um, the speed. Um, and for the speed, I don't want 360. Let's say I make it a random speed with a maximum of 30. Uh, so, and then I say increase speed. So this is remember when a bit of debris gets created, we create and we hear the the default superclass constructor gets called. So the default superclass constructor of the smooth mover, the default constructor here is empty. And so we are dealing initially uh, with a speed of zero. So this is stationary initially, but now we um, create a new vector with our random direction and a random speed. Um, and so now when a bit of debris is created, it has an initial uh, vector pointing in a random direction and makes it fly around. Let's try that out. So if I put that in here now and I make it run, so this flies there and this flies over there. See, and they fly off in different directions. Oy. Okay, so here if I pause this and I put a lot of bit of debris in here and I click run, boom, they all fly apart. And this is this is already very close to what we want. Now, if we want um, to make the rock explode, of course the rock um, does nothing at the moment. Let's say we give it an explode method. It does not need any parameters. Um, and it looks something like this. We just say, if the rock explodes, what we want to do is we want to place debris um, at the current position where the rock is. So I get the x position and I get the y position of um, the rock itself, and that's where I place the debris. And then I remove the rock itself. So I again get the world object and I say to the world remove object this that is the rock removing itself. Now uh, I need to write my place debris method which I've just um, done here and I've specified that with two parameters. It gets the x position and the y um, x and y coordinates of the location where I want the debris. Uh, we should also decide how many pieces of debris we want to have. And then we uh, write a loop uh, with a 
loop counter going from one um, while it is um, what? Let's call that num. Uh, let's make that a parameter. Num fragments. That's the number of fragments. Let's say that's another parameter here. Okay, the number of fragments that I want in my explosion. So my rock should um, fragment into this number of fragments. Um, and I need to increment my counter. So I, f I just make a loop and that many bits of debris I create now. So I do a um, get world dot add object and what I want to add here is new debris um, and I want to put that at coordinates x and y which were the coordinates where the rock were was before um, and I think that's it except that here the number of fragments now have to put in and let's say we want to make that a constant. So up here I would have to say private static final int num fragments and let's say a rock splits into what shall we say 40 different bits. Okay so now look at this if it explodes place 40 bits of debris at our location and remove the rock itself um, let's try that out. We get, uh, oh, there's an error here. Variable get world wasn't found. Well, get world wasn't meant to be a variable, it was well meant to be a method. That's because I forgot the um, brackets there. Try that again. Compile. This time it works. Compile the rest as well. Now, if I put a rock in and I run this, nothing happens. But if I now say explode, whoa, there we go. Okay, let's um, try that again. Put a rock in, run this, and say to the rock, explode. Wow, that looks good. Uh, maybe they should fly a little bit less far out. If I want to have them fly a little bit less far out, I should go to my debris and make um, my initial speed here, um, a bit less. Let's say my initial speed is only 20. In fact, there is a um, case for another constant. I c let's say I make it false is the, um, oh, that's not a vector. Uh, that's the force of the explosion. Um, so let's make that 20 is the force and then we can use our constant here that's better than hard coding these numbers so let's try that out again now I take my rock I run this I explode it Boom. okay well that's enough for the second part um, come back for the third part of uh, our explosion tutorial when we'll put that all a bit together um, that we make it uh, the explosions um, a little bit more accessible to the user Okay, until next time.